All right, here are the questions today is how can I use bands in my training? And so let me preface that by saying that's a very complicated question because bands themselves can be used for tons of different reasons. I'm just gonna talk about how they can be used to manipulate load. I'm not gonna be talking about how they can be used to change you know, uh, load through different angles. And what I mean by manipulating load, bands are typically used for a couple of reasons. One, bands are used to reduce the body weight at which the, um, sorry, reduced or used to assist a movement typically in the form of reducing body weight. So imagine someone doing a pull up. Right. If we have bands pulling us upward, we lay way less now because the bands are assisting us and they're assisting us by actually reducing our body weight. So if we think about this in terms of application, why would you want to reduce body weight? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, someone who's not very strong. Maybe that movement itself is a very difficult movement for that person and reducing the body weight allows them to do it in a more safe or in a safer manner. Think of it as like an older adult who can't get up off the chair very well. Now if you have band assisted movements, they're able to do multiple repetitions. Think about a pull up. Someone who's not able to do uh, you know, two pull ups or one pull up, right? If one pull up is their one rep max and you have them do a pull up every time, that's period taxing. So maybe we add bands on it so we reduce their body weight so they can now do five, six, seven, eight pull ups and continually train at a reduced body weight until they're able to actually produce enough force to do their body weight itself multiple reps. So bands can be used to reduce body weight. Bands can also be used, again, to reduce body weight, but by reducing body weight, you actually increase velocity. So you lower the mass at which something, so you lower the mass and you increase, you lower the mass of the individual right, by having band assistance, which then therefore increases the velocity of the movement if the movement itself is performed with maximal intent. So I mean by that thing about a jump, we have band assistance, we now weigh less because the bands are pulling off, you know, pulling us upward, essentially making us weigh less. And now we have to produce force against, you know, a less than body weight uh, situation. So now that's actually increasing the movement velocity and we're training quote unquote higher velocity movements. So that aspect of band assistance can be used for performance, you know, someone training high velocity, just as much as it can be used to assist someone doing a movement where they're not either comfortable or strong enough to do it themselves. Now there's also the uh, bands being used to increase right certain loads. Let's say let's talk about eccentric first. Bands can pull you down. So if we have bands and they're anchored in the floor, we're holding them and we go down for a jump, they pull us down faster than we can possibly load. So this is where we get band accelerated movements. These are movements where we're using the bands to accelerate the speed at which they can fall faster than a free fall could fall itself. So if we're doing a bench press and we're working on rapid eccentric loads, having bands allows you to have a faster eccentric velocity than you would be able to if the, ba if the bar was just by itself and you let it free fall by uh, you know letting gravity take over. So bands can be used for eccentrically accelerated movements. They can also be used as a form of accommodating resistance. Now accommodating resistance typically occurs during the concentric portion of the movement. This is where you're pressing an object and as you lift it, the bar gets heavier and heavier. So as you push the bar further away from your body, you increase band tension. Now this is used because most submaximal movements, we perform it with maximal intent, we have a reduction in the amount of, you know, it's called actually a deceleration phase. You have a reduction towards the end of the movement in the amount of force you produce because your body actually has to start to slow the bar down. Otherwise they go flying out of your hands. So now you have band you know, resisted movements typically in the form of accommodating resistance. Now these aren't mutually exclusive, right? Because if you have bands on a bar, naturally you have the eccentrically accelerated portion you could have, by the way, you don't have to have because you can control the tempo. Obviously you don't have to have it free fall. You have the option to have it eccentrically uh, accelerated. And you also have the accommodating resistance when you're pressing upwards. So bands can be used for one, assistance itself, right? Reducing body weight to make a movement safer easier to perform and allows you to train if your body weight is near maximal at not such maximal loads. It's also used to reduce body weight because it assists or speeds up the movement. This is for a velocity accelerator, you know, uh, increased velocity. These are band um, accelerated, sorry, band assisted movements that essentially let you produce force against a load that is less than it would be otherwise without the band. So higher velocity training. We also have the band accelerated movements, and these are movements where the bands are pulling someone down quicker and forcing that eccentric phase to be faster than normal, right? And we're using that whether it's a bench press or a jump. It's things where bands can help accelerate the eccentric portion of the movement 
And then we have the accommodating resistance portion where bands can be used to increase tension as the bars move further and further away from the body in the case of a bench press, which forces you to continuously produce force to get that bar to move and reduces the amount of deceleration phase, theoretically increasing the amount of EMG activity and um, the amount of force you have to produce to actually move the bar itself. And so when we look at bands, it's difficult to isolate them and say bands have to be used for only one reason or another. Bands can be used for numerous reasons in numerous different situations. And depending on the situation you're in, you might have to reduce body weight because someone's not weak or someone's not strong enough, or you might want to accelerate the eccentric portion because that person is that strong and they need to really work on how fast they can produce eccentric force. Bands by themselves typically, unless you have a whole bunch of bands, don't provide enough resistance, but you can actually get really strong bands, which, you know, um, different type of really thick rubber bands are really useful for providing quite a bit of resistance. But you can also use it in conjunction with free weights themselves, uh, barbells, to add that accommodating resistance, to add that eccentric acceleration. And so while I see bands as being very useful and people typically associate them with only, you know, kind of the west side traditional movements where they're either in a speed bench, they can also be really used in a rehab setting to reduce the body weight of an individual where that loads too much. Because think about it for this way, if that person is trying to introduce plyometrics again and they haven't even introduced plyometrics once and they're gonna force them to do it at their body weight, why not re-reduce their body weight by adding bands? So now they can produce um, you know, sporting-like movements of plyometrics against a reduction in load, so their body mass now weighs less, and that's a great way to transition them going forward. Again, understanding the concept of bands, how they can be used, and how you can implement them into your training. Good question, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks for asking, and feel free to pass on uh, some more questions as we move forward. Thank you.